What's up, friends? Chris Coyer here from Code Pen. I want to do a little Code Pen radio on TV with just little old me. I want to talk about JavaScript modules or ES modules. It's a thing I've been excited about for a long time. The JavaScript ecosystem has been moving more and more there. It works in native browsers uh, with pretty good support. I'm pretty much talking about the import and export keywords in JavaScript. The reason I'm excited about it is just such a clear way to have like chunks of code be really clear about what they're going to do and have them depend on each other in a right way. The Node ecosystem has picked it up in a big way too. A little more controversial over there, but uh, ultimately a good thing, I hope. So when you say export, it's just a keyword. Uh, here's some JavaScript that's using the export keyword. This, you know, I don't have to put export. I can just say const design tokens equals something. You know, design tokens would be a nice thing to... Uh, to, to export in a way so that other files could grab this piece of code and use this. So I've said design tokens, this is an object, there's colors in here. We could have like spacing in here too and have it be an object and we'll just have say, uh, I don't know what, the normal spacing is one rem or something like that, sure. Now we can have other pieces of code pull this piece of code in and use it. Maybe it's imported a thousand times throughout our application. Uh, and that way it gives us this one place to update stuff like that. So how does, how does CodePen, this is just a native JavaScript feature. It's not really specific to CodePen. But if I were to like make a new pen and a new tab here, we'll open one up. I've got this saved. Did you know that on CodePen you can just use file extensions? Like, oh, I want, grab me the HTML from this pen. Oh, well, there isn't any because I didn't write any. Give me the JavaScript from this pen. Oh, there it is. I have this URL then that I can use elsewhere. And sometimes that's useful when you say, oh, here, add this external JavaScript to my pen. That'll link it up as a script tag in the pen. That can be useful. But now I don't even have to do that. I can just type import and then what um, uh, from here, right? But what do I import? Well, in this case, there's no default, right? I didn't say e export default const design tokens. I just have a named export here. So I have to put that in the curly brackets and I'll say import those design tokens. And then if I console.log um, these design tokens, I think we should get a look at them real quick and easy here, right? Uh, object, object, and there they are. So I could just straight up use them. So if I went like document.body. What is it? Style.background color or something equals design tokens.colors.brand. Yeah. Red. Heck yeah. So I'd save that. And if that were to change someday and that brand color were to become uh, fog dog or whatever, save as I kind of rerun this pen, it should rerun that exp that import again and pull orange, the famous fog dog color. So great. It could be super useful for a design system. But of course, um, these things are, 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 are imports and exports are useful for all kinds of things. Entire JavaScript libraries work on them. Uh, you know, Unpackage is a really cool um, CDN thing that could pull anything off of NPM. Really cool, useful project. Here's an example of how you could grab React off of NPM, for example. Unpackage just kind of automatically makes that work. But one thing is... Everything on NPM is generally usable in Node, right? Like you could you could type, this would be common in a, like a create React app kind of thing, right? Import React from React. Turns out that line of code, where it looks like this line of code in a way, and uh, never mind the curly braces or anything, this is just pulling in a default named or a named export or something. It's this that makes this invalid. This is just some kind of naming convention thing that bundlers like Webpack essentially invented. And they say, oh, if it looks like that, well, it probably just means that there's something in the, the node underscore modules folder on this system that I can go find. It was just kind of like a convention, but that's not going to work. Um, in in like code pen for example and we'll, we'll kind of get to get to that in a minute um so the you know notice it's linking to the umd version of it not not something that umd is like not ready for import and export natively that's like use it as a script tag not as an import 
Um, so unpackage isn't really going to help us here. In fact, it's kind of the same as like if you look on CodePen for external assets and you just look for React or something, that's the same kind of thing we're going to give you is the UMD version of React to use in that way. That's perfectly fine. Go ahead and use it in that way if you want to. But what if you want to use it this way to have it feel a little bit closer to that you know, the way that you really work on JavaScript projects for the most part these days is declare your imports right in the files that you're working on them. Skypack is another CDN that r helps with this more in a different way than Unpackage does and that it also f is everything on NPM is available to it. But there's some like internal magic with Skypack where it just, uh, I think it grabs every single package it can find and then like runs it through rollup or something and makes sure that it's... Um, ES modules friendly. Like I have no idea if this particular library was written to be ES modules friendly, like this syntax is, but it doesn't matter because Skypack's gonna make it work. Um, so this is kind of a famous example of it just because it works. If I just drop those at the top here, we should see a confetti blast right here on this pen. You see it all oh, fancy because uh, that's just gonna work. That's very satisfying. And React can kind of work in the same in the same way. So I have um, an example here. I made a, uh, a collection on CodePen of examples from um, from the greater world of <laughs> things on NPM that people might want to use. So here's React and React DOM, which aren't really written for ES, ES modules kind of out of the box, but Skypack makes it work. And then look, react dom dot render, just a simple function, hello name, you know, I could say hello, Chris, um, and add exclamation points. And this is just React, like it's you know, like a no build process version of React that's absolutely gonna work on CodePen. And it opens up the entire world of using anything you want uh, from NPM on CodePen, which is pretty great. And, and in fact, that's one of the few things that CodePen does actually attempt to help you with a little bit. Like if we went into settings under JavaScript, there's a search for packages. So if I search for React here, instead of up here, where it's searching CDNJS in this case, and add it here, it's gonna add the kind of Skypack version of React to this pen for us. Um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, CodePen has another trick up its sleeve in that regard. And say these weren't here and I just, or let's say just the top one wasn't ready, right? And I just wrote import react from react, uh, lowercase, right? It's going to notice that. You'll see this little yellow question mark up here. It's going to say, oh, I see what you're trying to do. Did you copy and paste that from a tutorial or something like that? Uh, I see what you're doing. I'll just fix it for you. So you just hit replace invalid imports and it's going to switch it over to the Skypack version and it's going to start working again. It turns out that this is a pretty easy transition to make because the URL format of Skypack kind of matches the URL conventions of NPM and it just works. Very, very satisfying, I think. So that's cool. I would like to mention that Netlify is our sponsor this week on CodePen Radio. And I thought I'd specifically call out Netlify functions because that's a pretty powerful thing that they do. So when you have a Netlify project, you can just kind of have a functions folder. And in that folder, you can, uh, uh, you know, here's the signature of a function that just does something really su super simple. In this case, it returns some JSON. This It's like runs in Node on the server for you. So Netlify, you might think of as it's Jamstack hosting. It's mostly static. But if you need to run something on a server, you need to run a little JavaScript or Go or whatever, you can just do that because Netlify just says, eh, just put that, put that, put that code in a folder for me and I'll run it for you. No problem. Uh, and it turns Jamstack, that's what Jamstack is. It really opens up the door for what's possible. Uh, and normally like running a cloud function is, you know, it's like non-trivial, you know, in, in a way. You have to like sign up for some cloud service and get your credentials and set up all your permissions and put your credit card on file because they're not free and all that. And with Netlify functions, you just chuck some functions in a folder and you refer to them locally so you don't have to wor work with cores or anything. And it just works really just a tremendous, feature uh, that Netlify offers. They're our sponsor. High five to them. Thanks so much for the support. If you look around at some more other examples I have of, of things that we 
kind of just pull off of, of NPM and use. Here's a little interesting scrolling library. Oh, cool. Like anything that you see an example of that's just something that gets pulled from NPM and they have that in their docs, like, oh, how do you use it? Oh, you just import it and then you use it. That's going to work on CodePen kind of through the magic of native ES modules imports and uh, and the combination of Skypack making it work here is great. Yeah, you, of course, if you had, if you have code yourself that you want to export, you can just refer to it from another pen as well. Pretty darn satisfying there, really. I would want to end with mentioning that importing like this, just I guess raw, is just JavaScript imports. It expects what you're going to import is exported on the other side, and it's exported as you know, in like a default or something, but there's other types of imports that are starting to land in browsers. So one of them is JSON modules. So look at this line of code, import, it's the same thing, you know, some named thing or a named export or a default or something. But then at the end you say assert type equals JSON. So how does that work? Well, here I'm using the CodePen Asset Manager here. I've I've done a search for JSONs just to see as, you know, over the years, of course, I have some data sitting there somewhere, don't I? So here's a little chunk of JSON data. Cool. Uh, oh, I didn't even mean to save it. Hopefully I didn't edit it in some way. I'll copy the URL from it. And here's an empty pen. So I can say import and then uh, whatever I want, right? From and then this URL. And then what? Assert type equals JSON. And I guess we better know what the name of it is, right? What is the name? Oh, there is no name. It's just whatever I want to call it. Import data from this. So console.log data. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Oh, we're going to get exactly the data in that file. So normally it just saves some typing, doesn't it? I think it's nice and uh, um, that normally I have to fetch it and deal with, you know, a couple of extra lines of codes where I parse the JSON out of the thing. Now it's just a one liner. Does this JavaScript that I'm about to rely on, rely on some JSON data? Well, any source that's going to spit out that JSON data, just import it directly from there. And now you have that JSON data. What a nice, just a nice syntactical thing that JavaScript is offering. Thank you. I like it. Not available in absolutely all browsers, I don't think, but you know, it's dropped in Chrome and then other browsers catch up, such is the story. So often these days, there's another type, not just JSON now, but type equals CSS here as well. And guess what it's called? CSS modules, little drama there, because that's of course a name, or maybe they called it CSS module scripts. Yeah, sure, fine. Uh, but you can see the, uh, this is the JSON one we just talked about, not terribly different as a CSS type. And then once you have that CSS type, you could use it for anything. You, you know, it's, it's a pretty satisfying little bit. So in this case, I'll just open this pen wider so you can see it here. Let me grab this URL and just visit it so you can see I'm using the URL extension CSS here so I can see what it's going to give me. And if I log those styles, it comes across, did it run? Styles is empty in this case, styles, styles. Maybe I should log styles. It's going to come across as an object CSS style sheet. Sure. So it's not really a traditional object. It's a special kind of style sheet, but I think you can still iterate over it and change it and stuff. In fact, there's a great video I'll put in the show notes of my friend Dave Rupert, who made like a machine to kind of manipulate the styles coming in to mimic what the classic project CSS modules did. But in this case, I'm using lit element and I just said, hey, the style sheet for this particular component should just be the styles that I'm pulling from this pen, which is a background orange. And there you go. It gets applied over and over and scoped to that style sheet. Pretty darn satisfying if you ask me. And some of these things are so new and so in flux. And that's why I happen to be in Chrome Canary so that I can uh, demonstrate them. And I don't even, I can't even tell you exactly what the browser support of all this is or when you can start using it. But these really basic types of JS, uh, uh, you know, ES modules, you can absolutely just use right away. The more nuanced, futuristic stuff, probably not right away, but, but soon enough. And what a transformative little thing for the world. I think it's just so nice. Anyway, high five to all these technologies and companies involved as we go here. And thanks for watching Code Pen Radio. Yeah.